I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about um, sickness and healing. Um, <laughs> you know, sadly, a lot of times people are not taught that healing of all kinds is part of the atonement. It's part of what Christ died for us to have. Why would he want us to be saved and feel bad all the time? And, I, you know, for a long time, I didn't know that I could ask God to heal me when I was sick. Matter of fact, sometimes we just kind of fall in love with our illnesses and we claim them as our own, you know. My arthritis, my aching back, you know, <laughs> my blood pressure, my this and my that and my something else. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways that God gets healing to us today. And, you know, I thank God for all the, the medical help that's available. But even that, I don't think that can even help us if we don't go to God first. So let me just, you know, respectfully say, if you're trusting the doctor and you're leaving God out of the loop, uh, yeah, <laughs> you, uh, you know, we, we need the medical professionals to have the wisdom that only God can give them. And, um, but I do thank God for it. I am going to pray for people this morning that have pain in your body or that are sick, but before I do, I'm going to give you a little motherly speech, Okay. I'm old enough to be most of you, your mother, so we're just, I'm going to be motherly this morning. I'm going to talk to you like I would my kids. You need to take care of yourself. You need to stop staying up all night and not getting any sleep. You need to stop drinking six soda pops a day and drink more water. Amen. You need to stop eating sugar four times a day. Need to stop living on fast food that's full of chemicals and grease. And you need to de stress your life and calm down. Now, you know, everybody today wants a miracle. <laughs> but to go with a miracle, you need some wisdom or you'll lose the miracle you got. And get another problem. And most people today, most being, I don't know what percentage that would be, but I think there's more people who don't take care of themselves than those who do. And we make all kinds of excuses, and, I, and, and a lot of it's I'm busy. I don't, I don't have time to fix good food, so I just grab whatever is on the run. I can't get seven or eight hours sleep a night. I don't have time. I'm too busy. I don't have time to exercise. I don't, I don't have time to rest. I got to keep going, keep going, keep going. But doing what? <laughs> There's not a person in this room today that couldn't get a fair measure of the stress out of your life just by simply writing down everything it is that you think you have to do and eliminating the ones that aren't bearing any good fruit in your life. If you don't take care of you, who's going to? I'll say that again. If you don't take care of you, who's going to? Now here's the thing. I believe that healing is part of the atonement. The Bible says we can pray the prayer of faith and the sick will be healed. But I don't really think that it's going to do me any good to pray for everybody if you're just going to keep abusing yourself. Are we all together on this page this morning? Has anybody been even a little bit convicted that maybe you need to make a few changes and how you're... All right. Well, good. That's what it's all about. I rarely ever read this scripture because people who don't really know the word could get a wrong idea, but here it goes. Acts 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, when a certain man crippled from his birth was being carried along who was laid each day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that he might beg for charitable gifts from those who entered the temple. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he said, would you give me a gift? 
And now here's where it gets interesting. And Peter directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John, and said, look at us. <laughs> now basically what he's getting ready to say is, we've got what you need. You know why you've got what the world needs? Because you have the power of God in you. You have God's anointing in you, and you can pray for people. See, I told you, you're just like, you can pray for people and see the sick get well. Now, I know we're at a whole new gate for a lot of folks, and I understand that. You know, I was in a large denomination for a long, long time that didn't teach me anything about the miracle working power of God. I knew that God was powerful, but I didn't know that he wanted to share any of it with me. These guys were born again. They'd been there on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out, and now they have the nerve to stand and say, you have a problem, look at me. <laughs> You're still not with me, are you? Okay. <laughs> It's not anything you have in yourself. It's what God has given you. <laughs> and you know, there's a lot I don't understand about healing and you know, why we pray for some people and they get healed and why we pray for others and they don't. And, but I do believe part of it has something to do with this whole thing about how people just disrespect their Cells and their lives and the way people treat each other today and all the stress that's in the world. Amen? Amen. 